Hello, StarCraft fans. It's Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of Midrank Madness. Today we've got a game between Rod Tesla and Russian characters, Srilik. Hmm. On Catalyst, the latter edition. In the top left-hand corner of the map, we've got the Red Protoss player. His name is Rod Tesla. And in the bottom right-hand corner, it's the Blue Zerg player, Watnko. <laughs> That's what it looks like, Watt & Co. I'm going to call him Watt from now on, though. W-O-T for sure. I'm surprised the character showed up in-game, honestly. Usually I get question marks if it's not English stuff, but Watt & Co. it is. I'm sure somebody can translate in the uh, comments as to exactly what that is, what it translates to. Probably something obscene, If and I've just been saying it wrong all the time. Anyway, it's a PvZ edition of mid -Rank Madness. I believe it is a Diamond versus Platinum level. I won't tell you which player is which, but... Regardless, this was sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of mid-rank madness. There's basically all games from gold, platinum, and diamond level. I've actually kind of decreased, not kind of, I have. I've decreased the number of these lobby casts that I do per week. They just, the numbers were dwindling. I know there are very, very, very honorable fans, very uh, loyal fans, loyal fans to the Into the Void and mid-rank madness games, but... Just most of the people who are subscribed to my channel just don't care. And so I'm moving it to once a week. So on Fridays, it's going to be either an Into the Void or a Midrick Madness game. I'm going to try to alternate, I think, is what we'll do from this point on. And since we did an Into the Void last week and an extra silver game on Monday, I figured it was Midrick Madness's turn. So that's what we have. Meanwhile, Proxy Hatch from what? Was scouted, right? I want to say it was scouted. It was scouted and then can't... Wait. Did something just cancel? No, I thought I saw the cancel animation, but it is midnight, so no, maybe not. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe I'm just going crazy. So additional gateways, getting a forge up here too. I honestly just send a zealot down to hack at it. Make a zealot, Rod Tesla. You have enough monies to do that. Maybe send three or four. Oh, did I slow us down? I slowed us down too. What is going on with this cast? It's crazy. It's crazy is what it is. So probe scouts. And some links coming up here too, so he's got a pool back home, no gas whatsoever. This is going to be queens and spines and slow links and try to win. I like it. The proxy hatch is one of my favorite strategies in all of StarCraft 2. I like doing it. I like watching it. I like watching Protoss try to have to deal with it. And a good Protoss knows exactly how to deal with this thing. You make a couple zealots, you bring a handful of probes down, you can kill this before it even gets to this point. So yeah, now there's Lings, and now the Zealot's too late. It is too late now. Immediate Spine Crawler. There is a drone ready to rock, making another drone here at the front and getting a Queen. So it's going to get intense. It's going to get intense. A cannon would be extremely useful. Hold the line, Bob. Hold the line, Bob the Zealot. He's doing pretty darn well with it, too. And is he going to be enough? How many more Lings can he take with him? The answer is no more, but another Zealot pops out just in time. Oh, Bob, too. Bob, too, you'll never know how much you are appreciated. Look at him holding the wall, too, just in case he needs to. The links were dumb. The links should have come inside and maybe tried to pick up some probes. At least mess with the Zealot AI a little bit. Oh, there was a tiny window to get in there and try to kill this thing. But now it's done. So the spine is done. Does he have an overlord to provide sight? He does, but it's in the wrong spot. Bring the overlord over here so the spines may attack up the thing. That's what I recommend. All right. So, yeah, not c coming up there with those links is not great. Zealot's got five kills. Cannon's doing some work, too. Already has two. Creep spread. Okay, so creep spread gets you up here, but doesn't give you vision. It doesn't give you vision. The creep tumor itself provides the vision. So if the tumor's at the bottom of this ramp, it can't see up this thing. Man, this creep is so gross. Creep on Protoss buildings is so disgusting. Look how disgusting it is. Worse. Okay, so now Overlord decides to come over and say, you, you, would you like me to provide you with some spotting? And indeed, yes. There is a shield battery, but shield battery energy is not infinite. So shieldy boys are good, but you can't just sit there getting pounded all day long and expect things to go well for you. So two cannons and two zealots. This is actually kind of intense. Kind of a little bit intense, y'all. Maybe this will be my, my thumbnail. What do you think? Seems like a pretty good thumbnail. Maybe once somebody's attacking. We'll get a thumbnail. This is where you want to make a warp prison and go to the other side of the map and just start messing with the Zerg player because he's got nothing back home. He has literally zero things to defend with back home. So that's not great for him. All right, so spine shooting. Creep. How do you... Oh, creep tumor. Really? Very interesting. All right, either way, that's pretty good. We're going to go with that. We're going to go with that. Four minutes and 15 seconds. So zillit. 
with zero kills, manages to survive with a minimum of 20, 20 hit points. Creep Spray doesn't get up here. They kill the tumor. Do they have detection on it? No. Must have just killed it before. What? No. Wow. Okay, so Cannon must have been providing detection at that range. I always forget how far cannons and missile turrets and spore crawlers can see for detection. Especially compared to their attack range. Like, attack range is 7, which is real good. But that's like here. It's like 8 or 9 up to that. Up to that tumor. Trying to chase away the overlord. Not quite able to kill the thing. Getting healed up a tiny bit by shield battery. That is exactly one hit point. Overlord still continuing to patrol back and forth. There's another one here, though. And immortals would be really good at this point. A warp prism. There we go. There's the warp prism. I mean, you almost have to snipe off that tumor. You can't build anything up here until that tumor is gone. It is really providing some nice coverage for what right now. All right. See you later, Warpgate. You are not long for this world, but a queen does die in the process. Queen actually tanking some damage here, but they might lose both of them if you're not careful. Another queen down. This queen does have enough energy for to have enough energy for a transfuse, but now it's dead. Oh, what? The spine crawler saved it. Good job, spine crawler. Spine crawler. How many kills do you have? One. Lame. Only one kill. How about you? Also one. You're sharing the kills very, very nicely. Okay, right now this is the point where you make a whole ton of speedlings, and I think you just flood and win. I understand there's three adepts here, which is kind of intimidating, but you get up in that mineral line. Okay, so now it's just regular lings. Oh, killing this pylon would be a big deal, but can't quite get it at all. Man, this ling. Oh man, this ling spine crawler stuff is really damaging. But all the zerglings die. Spine crawler goes down too. Can he break out? He's trying, but it's not going particularly well. Two spines are just a lot of DPS. And their range is so far too. They have seven as well. Yeah, same as cannons, obviously. Adept oversteps her bounds a tiny bit here. This is where you need speed, though. Do you still have no gas? Oh, got two extractors, but doing literally nothing with it. And there's War Prism. Okay, so War Prism is being used to expand, but dude, I am not kidding. War Prism over here with like six zealots and just win the game. He is mining from this natural base is what, but I don't know if that's enough. Do you have any immortals yet? Finally an immortal. All right, so immortal come to the front here. I think, okay, maybe not just one Immortal, but Immortal's going to do a lot of work. Finally, Creep Tumor goes down. So Creep's going to start to recede here, at least from the ramp. Oh, there's a secondary one, though. There's a secondary Tumor. Ah. Oh, man. All right, so next is coming up in the bottom left-hand corner here for a Rod Tesla. I'm really surprised nobody said anything in this entire game. Usually when it's this crazy, someone's like, isn't this, wow, this is a crazy game. Y'all think, I'm, thanks for making it crazy, Zerg player. All right, War Prism. Ah, oh, War Prism thought about it's going the right direction to go down here and murder stuff, but it's too late. It is too late. Not fully saturated in his main either. Rod Tesla could make a couple more probes. It is making a couple more probes, so I'm okay with it. And actually, it should be oversaturating this so that you can send a bunch down here to your expansion when the time comes. Basically, mainered them over um, using the recall ability here, mass recall. That would be cool. That'd be really neat. Getting Resonating Glaives, which I'm not convinced is a great choice here. 23 to 19 Harvesters. Rod Tesla is up on that one. Resources lost. 1,300 from Rod Tesla and 1,400 from what? From Watco. It's very British. What? Oh, get it. Get the tumor before it finishes. I guess it doesn't really matter. It's within the detection range anyway. If you want to do the tumor, put it up here, man. Put it away from that detection. The Ling is trying to get in here and surround this immortal, but shielding helps pretty well. Cannon helping pretty well, too. Creep receding. If you can reach that one. Make an observer. Recommendation. Make an observer at this point. All right, so warp prism. Okay, just warp priming the guys over, but you can recall them, too. Pro tip. Right here. Recall all units owned by the player in the target area to the nexus. Same thing here, too. Boop, 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 boop. Faster. I mean, War Prism's not bad, which you can send eight of them down. Sending seven this time, but yeah. All right, so this is where Rod Tesla starts to get ahead. He has Archons. He has Immortals. It's just Ling Queen Spine right now from Watt, which is not going to do well for him in the long run. If the Zerg player 
Doesn't have T3 stuff. Tier 2 stuff. I mean, we're not even looking at roaches. Okay, there are roaches. Roaches are on the way. Maybe not the best idea when it's going to be Archon Immortal here from Rod Tesla, but that's okay. So expansion done, obviously, for Rod Tesla. He's got a Temple Archives. He needs to put these probes to work if he can, and I feel like it's very possible. Very possible for him to do that. I'm getting upgrades, though. Is that plus two? Good golly. He's getting plus two and another Immortal and some more um, gateways down here. I was going to say, maybe some Void Rays, but four Queens is a lot of anti-air, man. Nine damage, range of eight, weapon speed 0.71. This is so good. I buffed it a while ago and kind of kept it there. Expanding here is what? To the right side of his friend, of his uh, expansion at the frontier. Warp Prism still shuttling Protoss probes back and forth. Immortal... Takes one of the spine crawlers down. Another one gonna die here too if you focus it. No, 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 no. Why are you focusing queens? Get the, yes. Get the spines. They're a big problem here. Oh, trying to tank the damage are some of these stalkers, but that's bad. That is really bad news. Pulling back to the tank. To the tank. To the photon cannon that has 20 kills, mind you. Archon on the front trying to do some stuff. Immortals focus this down, and then everybody else has a much better time. Random Crossobile landing. Oh, that's good. Crossobile. Nice dodge, though. Better dodge. Better dodge from Rod Tessella there. Does he have enough energy for a chrono boost? He does. He's not chrono boosting anything at the moment, though. Still making immortals. How many kills you guys got? Zero, seven, zero. Cannon up to 20. Mentioned that previously. And if this is a slow warping, I guess that's not touching, quite touching the Nexus, and it's definitely not touching a gateway, but man, it is so close to all of those things. The slow warping. All right, finally teching to something. Here is what? It's got... Aspire. Spire in production. APM for these guys. 100 for Rod Tesla. 78 through the game. For what? His expansion is done. It's 40 to 24 harvesters, though. He's just been spending all of his larva. Oh, a changeling coming up. On stuff. And not so much on drones, which he really needs to do. If he's going to have any hope here in the mid game. Nice job. Scouting out the changeling, though, and destroying it, Rod Tesla. 10 points. 10 points for that one. Another shield battery? Yes, another shield battery up. I do like the shield battery decision, though. That's pretty amazing. Plus three. Go, oh, weapons. Plus three. Plus three Archons and plus three Immortals are really good. Really fantastic. See, here's the thing. You've got a Spire. You almost have a Spire, but you have 50 Minerals and 60 Gas in your bank. And you're making Spines and you're making Ravagers. And I understand you're making this stuff, but you're super down economically. You don't know about these additional bases that the Protoss player has. Oh, did he accidentally scout this? Hacks! Hacks! War Prism! No, don't leave the probes to die! War Prism left the probes to die. And going down if the Lings are away, and they can have this... Actually, most of the army's away here. He's gonna try to break out. Archon's stuck. As this High Templar, for some reason, is busy attacking stuff, because it does have that basic attack nowadays. And the army coming back. Corsa Bile is actually getting some hits there in the midst of this army. Lings in the front, Roaches and Ravagers in the back. I mean, Immortals are good, but not when they're outnumbered this much, and another Immortal goes down. Immortal at the top of the ramp being healed by shield batteries is going to be a 300 Immortal. So trying to expand here dies. It might give what a false sense of security. He thinks that Rod Tesla doesn't have anything other than this main base, but this bottom left base has still been unscouted. And you gotta start wondering, at some point in the game, how are you still affording this much stuff? How do you have these many Immortals how are you still making adepts? How are you building buildings? And the answer is not because you're on one base. It's not because that. It's because you're on two. Dos base besutos. Uh, you know it's late when I am making really random comments. Oh, you coming up? Archon with one hit point. One hit point and still alive. More lings coming up. I was going to say, if you're going to go Muta, you got to kind of save up a bank to make Muta. They're 100, 100 each. Oh, Archon overextends. No immortals. You can't get surrounded. You can't get surrounded. You got surrounded. And one of you died in the process. Gross of Vials landing. Ugh. Getting some good hits off there. If these guys had Storm, I feel like Rod Tesla would be in a better place, but he's not researching Storm. 
He's just using the High Templar for Archons, which is cool, but you got to make them into Archons as soon as they're ready to go. Because otherwise, yeah. So it's 30 to 29 Harvesters. A bunch of probes died because, again, Warp Prism left them to their deaths back here at <laughs> this location. <laughs> there you go. Immediate Archon to make there. Yeah, this is the most patient Zerg player I've ever seen. I cannot believe. Oh, I was going to say, Overlord providing vision because there's no tumor up here. Nope, there's not. It's kind of a thin part of the creep, isn't it? It's weird. What other thin parts exist? Seems like it's just the that. I mean, I guess the unbuildable plate or rocks can still be seen through the creep, but I don't know what this is. Blech. Creep is alive. Alright, so this expansion definitely keeping Raw Tesla from dying. Another changeling comes up. Immediately gets spooked. Smoked out. The hive cluster is under attack. Archon trying to win the battle of the spine crawler versus uh Archon and wins. This has got plus three attack, and that bonus damage versus biological counts against buildings two for sure because they're biological. Oh, get out of there, Archon. No, the revenge is complete. The revenge is complete. Some lings get up there. This cannon has 28 kills. Hero cannon. Dude, killing this tumor would do a world of good for you right now. If you would make a single observer. Just for detection's sake. That's a lot of roaches, though. Six roaches on the way. I'm not sure that roach is what you want. Ravager, probably better. And honestly, Muta. If you could. Maybe cross a bile down the Archons, focus them down. The Mutas fly into this mineral line where there's absolutely no defense whatsoever. Another Archon trying to finish off the Spore Crawler. Look at the damage. 47 damage. Splash versus Biological. Get out of there. Bait them in. Bait them in. Cross a bile's landing. Roaches Ravager trying to come up the ramp. Coming up the ramp is not a good decision. All right, so got some idle workers here in the main base of Rod Tesla. He is expanding again, though. I like that. I like that he's expanding again here. And boy, what if you would just take like three more bases, get some gas saturation up, drone up for about two seconds. I think you could win this game. Just through sheer overwhelming numbers. Also scouting. Pro tip, scout. If your opponent's still making stuff and you think they should be mining out, Scout, there have to be other nexuses around here somewhere. And he's got these additional hatches, but they're just not anywhere close to saturated. Okay, now they're close to saturated. Now getting extended thermal lances, Rod Tesla. Going to try to make some Colossus once his or, or immortal count is high enough. He's got five of them with plus three attack, which is real great. Even plus two armor, which I didn't mention previously. Four probes. On the way down. Another attempt to come down the ramp from Rod Tesla. Is this one going to work? Uh, doesn't like it. Doesn't like it. Especially the problem of going onto the ramp makes it a nice target for Corrosive Biles. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, those were killer hits anyway, though. Ow! Ouch. Oof. My Immortals. My Immortals. Another Archon ends up falling there. Cannon just doing what it does. Zerglings trying to join the party, but they're being blocked off by their own queen right now. A slow open of Zealots trying to assist. No, backing up the Immortal to a corner. Can it live? Yes. Does live with five kills. Cannon with 33. Ah, oh, Cross of Biling down the Immortal, though. Nope. Archon, I was going to say, very, very low on HP right now. So many spines present, but the upgrades are so good. No upgrades at all for what? Zero, zero upgrades. Finally, a Colossus is out. Almost has extended Thermal Lance. Let's see that kick in. See if he hits anything. Yeah, now we can hit that. That's so great. That's a great example of the extended thermal lance. I like it very much. Good times. Good times. Red lasers, too. I like the red laser. Got that uh, Alarak skin. Whatever his people are. Taldarim, maybe? See the Taldarim? I don't know. Hey, finally made some mutas. That's kind of a fun battle. Cannon helping with this one, though. Stalkers, too. Archon's especially good. Muta's trying to harass, but again, 
Mutas are good at numbers of five or more. If you can make five, six, seven, they're really better, more effective on the harassing level. And if you want to make like 30, that's also pretty good. So now accidentally, I think can accidentally scout. He's bases. Yep, sees this one, says, oh, that's real bad. Uh, sees that transfer and does scout this base too. So the mutas accidentally see it coming down the ramp. Plus three, plus two immortals. These roaches are no match whatsoever. Colossus, don't attack the hatchery, Colossus. Help with other stuff, yo. Single corruptor out. Immortal, 11 kills, four kills. Dude, Colossus, help. Help. There it is. There's the Colossus help. I'm liking that very, very much. Corrosive Vile does hit. Some Hydras are out, which are pretty good stuff. Muta's trying to deal with this base. Nope, Cannon finishes those two off with the help of the Shield Battery. Corruptor, 34 kills on that Cannon. Broodlings finishing off a Stalker? Yes. Yes, Broodlings can do that sometimes. And that Overseer is in Overseer mode. Oversight. Ah, uh, Roaches pop out in exactly the wrong location. Again, the upgrades are just real big. The upgrades are a big deal for these stalkers right now. It is 73 to 65 total supply. 42 to 30 total harvesters. It still does not have an observer to clear out these tumors. It's kind of driving me nuts from Rod Tesla. Come on, man. Come on, man. Do this thing. All right. Meanwhile, a ton of roaches moving out here for what? Still doesn't have any, any upgrades on them whatsoever. Does our Protoss player know about this? No. Nope, doesn't know about this sneaky base up here. If he did, he'd probably go kill it. Just saying. So Hydra Roach, actually not bad against this composition. Ah, Roach is trying to finish off this left side base. Adept's coming in to deal with the Roach. I am not convinced about this at all. Yeah, they get surrounded by Roach Hydra. I'm pretty much instantly killed. But the bunch of stalkers come down with an Archon, and suddenly Watt doesn't quite like what he's seeing here. Besides to retreat. Does he finally clear out these tumors? He did. Some of the tumors died. Did you make an observer? Yes. Okay, so there is an observer out. Thank goodness for that. Some roaches down in this bottom left. Sneaky, sneaky base getting taken out by Immortal. 13 kills with some stalkers here too. Their bonus damage versus armored coming in very nicely. In that situation, Rod Tesla taking a Nexus along the left side and finally free. Finally free of the tyranny of the Zerg contain after almost 20 minutes. He decides it is time to move on out. 85 to 48 total supply. What is just making mutas, a couple mutas, three mutas, a queen, a spine. It's just not enough. It's really honestly just not enough here. Yeah, and there we go. This is going to be it. I think this is the death knell for our Zerg player. I'm not sure what all the adepts are for. I guess they have Resonating Glaives and plus three attack though, so their damage is pretty good. Again, especially considering Watt has no upgrades whatsoever. It's also, if you make 10 Zerglings. 10 Zerglings against this many Adepts with the better upgrades? Yeah, no. Nope. Trying to save his own base with the Spines. No, not going to happen. Not even getting those cancels off either. Roach Warren, go and die. Hydra looks then gonna die. Spire gonna die. I just don't see. There's a bit of a link counterattack attempt here, but Hero Cannon, man. Look at this Hero Cannon. He's got 42 kills. When did you see a cannon with 42 kills in a game? Never. That's when. That is when. Where's this immortal? 17 kill immortal. He is a master. Master level. And I think that's it for what? It just it's 116 to 35 supply. You just don't come down from 116. Or come back, right? From down 116 to 35 supply. It doesn't happen at any level of the StarCraft main base in shambles. Even the larva getting taken out by the Adepts. There are certain units that are good at killing larva. Adepts are one of them. I'm not entirely sure why. Archon's too. Archon's very good. Oh, there's an infestation pit. Oh, the mutant. No, cannon. Cannon live. Oh, cannon's being protected by... These shield batteries. Cannon's fine. I don't know why I was worried about Cannon. How about you guys? Nope. It's a one last desperate stand by the Mutalisks of Watts trying to kill as many probes as they Zergly can. But the main base is toast. 
Stalker is trying to deal with this thing again. In this situation, not generally that good, but because the upgrades are so much better for the Stalkers compared to the Mutas, they're going to be fine. Look at this. Generally, in like one-to-one -one numbers, the Stalkers aren't going to do that well, but today, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. 43 kills. Secret base up here. Watco trying to hold on, but I just, come on, man. See the writing on the wall. Time to move on to greater and greener pastures. And that's it. He's out. Watt's gone. I mean, it could be a rage quit. It could just be a lack of understanding of the good manners of StarCraft. But he's out. His contain was broken. He lost his main. The counterattack was swift. And Vengeance was strong from Rod Tesla. And that's going to be the game. So, yeah, look at this. 16,000 resources lost for Red Tesla, Rod Tesla compared to 26,000 for what? I mean, it's just 162 wings. 40 roaches died. 40 roaches died. 17 queens. Holy cow. 18 spines. A couple hatcheries. A hive, because he had a hive for some reason. I mean, 8 archons and 31 adepts and 20 zealots and 10 um, um, immortals aren't cheap for Rod Tesla, but just he won the battle of the cost efficiency for sure. Whew. All right, so that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of mid Rank Madness. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and the Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.
Shara Sashi, yeah. 